Right, good morning everybody. It's good to be back with you on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's getting a little bit cooler, but it's also getting a little bit lighter now here in Kabeche in South Africa. And I already want to welcome everybody that's coming on. It's actually phenomenal. I see people are getting up earlier. I see you guys are getting used to um, the early sunrises. So Elise, Helen, Yvette, Yvonne, um, all is Helen Mothersell. Uh, Elizabeth, good morning. Good to have you all on here. Whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you're watching from, I just want to encourage you to please uh, go ahead and share. Um, go and share the, 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 the link with people. Go and share this video with others, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube and post on our WhatsApp statuses. Good morning, Uncle Mike, Mike Layard family. Cindy, good morning. Yes, absolutely, Cindy. This is the youth team this morning. Not only is it the youth team, but um, I'm going to introduce some young, um, handsome young men to you. Uh, also very good. <laughs> Don't laugh, Mike. You are a handsome young guy. And uh, <laughs> especially with that lovely long hair that you grow in there. But um, before I introduce them to you, I just want to again encourage you, tag people, get people on. Good morning, Temba. Uh, good morning, everyone that's coming on. Tag people, share this. Get as, let's get as many shares as possible. All right, now, Pastor Richard is going to be speaking this morning about why Peter sank. Now, I know there's a lot of excitement about the new Spider-Man movie that's coming out. I don't know when, whenever. It's not that Peter. It's not Peter Parker. Okay. Hello, Peter. <laughs> All right, have you seen the latest tra uh, trailer for Spider-Man? It's, it's a craze at the moment. Hello, Peter, an old foe coming back. But anyway, this is a different story. This is about Peter walking on the water. Why did he sink and why you don't have to sink? But anyway, moving on, please go ahead, tag, share, get others on. And we are going to have a phenomenal, phenomenal service. I've got a little competition here this morning. I want to um, share with you guys that you can win something. Compliments of the youth, Fresh Fire. You will be receiving a small little hamper from us if you can answer the next question correctly. But um, first of all, let's introduce the team. So this morning, I've got two of my youth team with us, Mike and Lundy. Hello, hello guys. Hello, 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 hello. hello. Mike, how's it going? I'm good, and you? Um, good. Yeah. I think um I think I think that today's rugby match will be pretty darn good. Oh, there we go, going straight into it. Mm. <laughs> All right, and Lundy, welcome. I think this is the first time you are hosting with us on a Sunday morning, Lundy. Yes, it's the first time. I'm usually familiar with the Fridays one, but this is kind of similar to the Friday ones. Yeah. Even though it's Sunday, just a different day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this and it's a different it time. Is. Different yeah. time, yes, yes. Mm. Usually you're hosting there, Lundy, on a Friday night at about quarter to seven before youth. Yes, yes. <laughs> usually then. Yeah, so if you guys so. don't know, Mike and Lundy are part of our youth team. And as you know, I just want to quickly say, I see Buyiswa, welcome. Uh, Liesl, good morning. I'm excited about the new Matrix movie. Oh, right, now, now we're going into movies already. Oh, yes, Matrix Matrix what No, not Matrix Retirement. What's it called? Resurre Matrix Resurre Resurrections. Resurrections. There we go. Oh, All right. Yeah, there's so many cool movies coming out that, that were supposed to be out last year. But before movies come out, we've got an exciting thing happening today. And I'm so glad that you're watching. Please come to church. I found out yesterday I was wrong. I made a video concern about the rugby being on at 11 o'clock. But then I noticed yesterday, no, the rugby is in fact on at 12 o'clock. So yeah. you can still make church and watch rugby. Isn't that so cool? You know, yes. that's, that's why we don't support the All Blacks, because they play during church. But the Springboks play after church, because yes. they serve Jesus. They love the Lord, <laughs> and they're Christians. So, yes. <laughs> so guys, they, there's a good reason to support the Springboks. I, 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 I mean, some of them are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Some well, anyway, so our question for you this morning, and then I'm going to ask Mike and Lundy to talk about something uh, that we're going to discuss this morning. But before I ask them about but connects and starting point, PowerPoint. I want to quickly ask you this morning, who's your favorite Springbok player, number one? Who's your favorite Springbok player? And what do you think the score against the Wobblies, I mean the Wallabies, are going to be today? So who's your favorite Springbok player? And what do you think the score is going to be? And I want to say this right now, off the bat. This week, whoever comes closest, because I'm going to go check out the comments, whoever comes closest to the score today between the Springboks and the wa Wallabies, I always want to call them the Wobblies, 
Quite the Freudian slip you've got. <laughs> okay, uh, we will be giving a, a a hamper from the youth. The youth. We'll make it decent. We'll make it cool. It'll be a it'll be a Springbok hamper. So there will probably be some biltong involved. I don't know uh, chips. What do you what do you guys usually use, Mark, uh, during a rugby like, match? Um, ourselves. <laughs> yeah, is, is it like you eat yourself? <laughs> sometimes, I mean, depending on how, how on how close the game is, you can start chowing on your nails. So we're gonna give away free nails. <laughs> no, no, don't take my nails. You don't have to, to, to buy <laughs> yours. <laughs> Metal nails, Landy. What do you have during the Springbok? If you're watching the Springbok ma- match, what are you, what are you sitting with? I'm sitting with some energy and some baltong and. Couch, obviously. The couch. <laughs> yes. couch. There we go. Couch. You own the couch. We're going to yes. own the couch this afternoon. <laughs> so, guys, let me know. Uh, Victor, Victor Matfield. Cindy says Victor Matfield. All right. All right. And oh what my, do you. That's a blast from um, the past. There we go. Blast from. Somebody, uh, Pastor Bentley said, in fact, this week his favorite player is Brian Abana, but that's quite from the past. But anyway, so Victor Matfield. Let us know who's your favorite Springbok player and what do you think. Oh, thank you, Liesel. Wow, I love it. Um, I see her favorite player is De Clack. And um, the box 26-15 to the Wannas, Wannabes. Yeah, the Wannabes. They want to be the Wannabes. <laughs> morning, Pastor Manny. Morning, morning Mom. Morning, Doreen. And um, my sister, Debbie. Madge, good morning. Thanks for tagging, Madge. Guys, please keep tagging. As I said, we've got one score there. Morning, you funny people. Yeah, we've got to be this, mo- this early in the morning. And um, I see Liesl's put down a prediction, 26-15. Let us know what your prediction, what do you think they're going um, to gonna score? And um, I think, yeah, whoever comes closest to the score, gets the score right, we'll give them a free entrance, a free pass to the next prophetic seminar as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let those prophetic giftings come out. But on a more um, closer to home note, uh, Mike and Lundy are youth leaders. They're children's church leaders. These are young guys who've gotten involved, and um, we love it. You know, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 20 to 22, says this. It says that every single person, every part of the body of Christ, the, even the most weakest, what seems to be the weakest, is more necessary, is the most necessary. You know, that's what I love about the Bible and and about Jesus and the body of Christ is there's no unimportant weak part of the body. Our bodies need every part of the body. And so this morning, I want to encourage you that God needs every part of the body. And this morning, I've got Mark and Lundy. And I'm going to start with Lundy. Lundy, uh, you're busy doing PowerPoint. Tell us something you learned from PowerPoint on Friday night. We're doing PowerPoint with the youth at the moment. And uh, yeah, let us know, what's, what's, what, what did you learn from Friday night's PowerPoint? Uh, I learned that you can never be too young to lead others and to spread the gospel because of your age. Because you, Jesus started spreading the gospel when he was 12 years old, right? Sure. Yeah, so age doesn't matter. When you know something, you can tell other people about it. Like I've learned that a lot about in my connect group with Nathan and Michael, my leaders, that helped me understand the word, even though if, when I don't understand it. So like maybe I, I get into some problems with the Bible that I don't understand what the point of the message is here. So Friday nights I come to my connect leaders, to Michael and Nathan, and they help me understand the, mis- the point of the message. Mm, sure. And Mark, you've been a connect leader now for a since the beginning of this year, and you've, you've transitioned from being a Connect member to being now a Connect leader. So tell me, how, how does it feel now being a Connect leader? Hmm. I actually can't answer that question. It's like, let me put it this way. It is, it is very much a different role, um, but, it's, but it doesn't feel that different. You know what I mean? It's like, you, basically, all you are is you're the guy who just has to keep the discussion on track, <laughs> <laughs> add some points and whatnot. But it's very interesting. Um, yeah. Very interesting, because you get to also hear other people's takes on what they think the Bible means, and it's, it's very, very interesting to hear what some people think. I love what you're saying. So basically what you're saying is, Anybody can actually become a connect yes. leader after going through starting point, through mm-hmm. growth point, and then PowerPoint. 
because it's it's and I know it's 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 a, it's a big responsibility, but essentially the task is you're just taking what you've learned, yeah, and you're saying basically you're passing it on to others, but you're also giving them the platform to speak and share their revelation. Yep, uh, and I'm trying to remember who said it, but there was this rare. We, I actually can't. And, and now that I'm trying to remember it, it slipped my mind completely. Ah, oh, whatever. But there was this really profound thing the one guy said. I can't remember it. I'll probably remember it later, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> but I was blown away. And I can tell you that that was very impressive. I was highly impressed. By what the person by said. By what the person said, yeah. I was, as I said, I was blown away. And I think that... People don't realize it, but once you become a connect leader, you get to basically become a member as well as an observer, if that makes sense. Sure. So you get to look into these guys' lives and you see, okay, well, where's this revelation coming from? Why? You can sort of start to answer questions. And it's, mm. Yeah. And Lundy, what excites you about leading other people in the word and becoming a connect leader? I guess what excites me is to know to know what how people like he said different point of views about people's the way they see Jesus and God. So I think what excites me is to teach people and to educate people about how Jesus did this, how he died for us, how we have a choice to be with him in heaven and to be heaven on earth and to share that knowledge and those people I share it with, share with other people and becomes a chain going all over the world, sharing, sharing, wow. learning, learning. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I remember, I remember, I, I actually call it a positive Ponzi scheme. In other words, it not, it's not really a Ponzi scheme, but basically it's a case of if I say two things to some person, they walk away changed, there's a high chance they go say two things to two other people. And eventually, just because I said and brought two people to the Lord, I've indirectly brought thousands. Sure. Wow. So, like, yeah. And I just want to say this, just like all of you are doing right now. I've been super, super impressed. As our service is filling up this morning, I just want to quickly, first of all, welcome all the people that are walking into church right now at our 9 a.m., uh, 8 a.m. service. <laughs> and, um, but you know what? Like all of you are doing right now, I see a lot of people are tagging people, friends, people on Facebook, tagging and sharing. This is how we share the gospel, guys. This is how simple it's become. But one of the things I want you to take note of is, isn't it so, this is what I love about young people, and this is why I love raising up young leaders. Leaders. Both Lundy and Michael have mentioned the world. Lundy just mentioned now, it's, it's, it's passing it on to others and take, this is how we take the gospel to the rest of the world. You know, I love big events. I love having people packed in a, in a stadium or in a church service which is ultimately the goal. We want to fill this place. But the most effective way to get the word to, to everybody around the world is literally like Mike and Lundy are saying, one person at a time, running a connect group, speaking to people, those around you. And then like Mike just said now, I, I know that you mentioned the word Ponzi scheme. Now, I know a lot of people don't like the word Ponzi yeah. scheme. But you know what? Effectively, Jesus actually educated us on the most effective marketing scheme ever, a marketing strategy, I should call it. Yes. That's what it it's is. It's not a scheme. It's not a it's scheme. Not a scheme. <laughs> it's not. If it, if, if it was, if, if, if it is a scheme, it, it's only that we benefit from it. Yes. But in, in closing, I just want to say this, before we open up in prayer, we're going to go into worship right now. But tonight you do not want to miss. Tonight at 7 p.m., okay, it's Jane Hammond. Jane Hammond is going to be prophesying. We are trusting the Lord for a real awesome word for our church, for our country, for our city. And uh, we know Jane Hammond's going to be coming on. She's been uh, seeking God's face since we asked her. And um, I want to say thank you for all of those. I see uh, Buyiswa, Madge has just said, so impressed and blessed by our youth leaders. Buyiswa, blessing our youth leaders. Yes, thank you so much. We do. We have incredible, incredible youth leaders and a youth team in this church. And... Um, 
That's essentially why I've asked Mike and Lundy to also come up so we can showcase just some of the youth. This is, a, this is just two of our amazing youth leaders. But don't miss tonight, Jane Hammond, at 7 p.m. on our live service. And then last thing is our question to you this morning. I see people, I love somebody, and I think it was my mom who's super confident. She predicted the Springboks winning 4014. And, um, and I see people mentioning, guys, yeah. please go ahead. Let us know who's your favorite Springbok player and what do you think the score is going to be. And we will be checking the comments and this week announcing someone who will win a hamper from the youth team uh, for the next Springbok game. And uh, go ahead, please comment. Uh, let us know who your favorite is, what the score is going to be this afternoon. But let's open up in prayer as we open the service. And Father, this morning, we want to thank you for your love. We want to thank you for your love and your, the, Lord, this, this commission that you've given us to spread around the world, to spread the gospel around. Lord, I pray as people tag friends, family, loved ones this morning. I want to thank you, Lord, for each and every person that comes on you that will de- just feel and experience and encounter the peace and the presence of God wherever they are sitting watching this morning in Jesus mighty name amen and enjoy the worship as we go into a time of praise and worship amen hallelujah come on let's stand this morning aren't you glad that you came to the house of the Lord this morning it's so good to see friendly faces Hello there. Come on, this morning we're gonna be we're gonna lift up the name of Jesus. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our worship. And before we just start, I want to just read this scripture of Psalm 95 from verse 1 to 7. And it says this: Oh come, let us sing to the Lord, let us sing joyfully, let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence. With thanksgiving, let us shout joyfully with this, with, with, to Him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King um, above all other gods. In His hand are the deep places of the earth. The height of the hills are His also. The sea is His, for He made it. And His hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before our Lord, our our Maker, for He is our God, and we are His people, the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Hallelujah. Our God is a great God. Hallelujah. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that this morning? Lord, we're so thankful, O God, that despite everything that has happened around us, O God, You are still on the throne, You are still God, and You are still good. And we worship you this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to this. Wandering into the night. Wanting a place to hide. This soul so this bag of bones and I try with all my mind but I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting this bag of bones listen to this and just when Because he healed my heart and changed my name forever free. I'm not the same, I think. Try to do my mind, and I try to do my mind, but I 
get up out of that hey get up get up get up get up out of hey get up get up get up come on hey get up get up get up get up come on prophesy get up out of that get up get up get up get up out get up out of that grave Get up out of that, hey, and get up out of that grave, and get up out of that grave, and get up out of that grave. Come on, say, get up out of that grave, and get up out of that grave, get up out of that grave, and get up out of that grave. Come on, say, get up out of that grave, hey, get up out of that grave, get up out of that grave, hey, get up out of that grave, get up out of that, hey, get up out of that grave, and get up out of that grave. Get up out of that grave, get up out of that grave, hey, get up out of that grave, get up out of that grave, and see, get up out of that grave, get up out of that grave, get up out of that grave, get up out of that grave. Hey, don't you know the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, is the spirit of prophecy, is the spirit of prophecy, said the testimony of Jesus. Is the spirit of prophecy? Is the spirit of prophecy? Is the spirit of come on? Say, that means what he done for me. Hey, he can do it for you. Hey, that means what he done for me. Hey, he can do it for me. Hey, that means what he done for you. Hey, he can do it for me. Come on, that means what he done for me. Hey, hey, he can do it for you. Say, the testimony of Jesus is spirit of prophecy. Is the spirit of prophecy. Is the spirit of prophecy. That means what he done for me. Hey. He can do for you, hey, that means what he done for you, he can do for me, say, say, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave, get up, get up, get up, come on, get up out, don't stop, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave, get up out of, get up, get up out of that said, hell lost another one. I am free, I am free, said I am free. Come on, said hell lost another one. I am free, I am free, I am free. Say, said hell lost another one. I am free, I am free, I am free. Say, hell lost another one. I am free, I am free, I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I said I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Come on, sing with me. Said I'm free. Said I am free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you out of the grave, if you out of the gay grave, give him a shout of praise. You are free. You are free. You are free this morning. Hallelujah. Oh. Lord, we thank you that our freedom, our freedom comes because you are good, oh God. Not because of what we've done, but our freedom comes because of your goodness and your kindness towards us. Oh, I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days 
I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head to you I will sing of your goodness of God Come on, sing all my life And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am
is running after us. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Father, this morning we thank you that yes, your goodness, your mercy is following us, Father God, all the days of our lives. Lord Jesus, I thank you that we're never found wanting. You're our good shepherd. You look after us. And Lord, as we seek your face this morning, Father, I just thank you for your presence, for the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, Lord, to come upon every heart, upon every home, upon every mind, upon every family member this morning. Father, we declare war on fear. We declare this morning war on fear. We shall not fear. We will not be a fearful generation. We will not be a fearful nation, Father God. But I thank you this morning that we are covered, empowered by the blood of Jesus and the Spirit of God in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give the God all the glory this morning and thank Him this morning. Amen. Amen. You, the church, you can take a seat. And as you're taking a seat, um, we want to make a special welcome because I'm very excited right now to see that there are a lot of new people here, or a lot of people at the 8 a.m. service. Our 8 a.m. service is growing, and um, there's less groaning and more growing. Amen. When you groan less, you grow more. Amen. <laughs> so this morning, I want to make a special welcome. We've got a Connection Cafe, a coffee shop next door, where we give uh, coffee and a free treat to people that are here for the first time at our church services. So this morning, those of you who are here for the first time at Word of Faith this morning for a church service, just raise your hand where you are quickly so we can give you a special welcome. We'd love to give you something. All those that are here for the first time, just raise your hand where you are. We've got ushers that would like to just welcome you if there's anybody with their hands raised. Or if you're watching for the first time, um, just say a hi there or amen if that is you this morning. If you're watching for the first time, we also want to make a special welcome to all of you. Um, just very quickly, I want to mention we are going to be doing communion this morning. 
Communion. We're always excited for communion. Come on, who in the church here this morning is excited for communion? Amen. I'm excited about communion. You know, and, and it's not just some ritual we do. We believe there is power in the resurrection power. You know, we believe the resurrection power of Jesus Christ is flowing through us. And as we take, partake of this this morning, we're going to do it at the end of the service. So if you're watching on live, uh, please go and get your bread, your um, grape juice, whatever you have in your home. Sometimes we use Oros if that's all we've got. Chuck in a bit of red coloring if you want. However you... <laughs> Water works as well. Water works. There we go. But anyway, we're going to do communion at the end of the service after Pastor Richard's message and ministry. So go ahead, get your communion stuff ready. And we're going to hand over to Pastor Mariano. Good morning, everyone. It's good to be here in, in the house and the presence of God is here and, and um, online with you this morning. And um, you know how funny you wake up with funny things and... Um, I, I woke up this morning thinking of the firsts, and somehow the first moon landing came into my head. And I was 21 years old, and um, it was, uh, it, <laughs> the, uh, they called it the eagle. And um, it was John Aldrin, it was the first one out of the spaceship, and he said, that, uh, he said the eagle has landed one small step, for man, one giant leap for mankind. And um, yeah, it was a giant leap. And the other day, Richard Branson somehow just took his own little ride into space. And, you know, because every, there's a, to the first, there's always consequences and growth and difference. And it, st- it kicks off something. And, um, I uh, and and then there was something else that actually, uh, uh, but I want to just quickly speak on um, Romans eleven sixteen says, for the first fruit is holy, and the if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root is holy, so are the branches, and um, I uh, realize that. The Bible also says, seek ye first. And in that the Amplified, I want to actually put it up. It says, um, uh, uh, seek the f- you f- him first, his way of living and doing life right. And then all these things will be added unto you. And um, I think I've always... Uh, I love the concept of firsts. You know, the first time you do anything, it's exciting. The first time something happens, there's, a, there's, there's things that happen. Um, I, I put this this thing on, this um, uh, piece of jewelry on, and actually Jimmy had made it for me for our 50th last year. And it, it was strange. He's always been Jimmy and Mariana. And... Um, because the man is the first. He was made first. We come, I'm not a woman's liver, by the way. I'm, I'm happy to have the man as the head of the home. Really, uh, all these people that had their little fussies about everything, I think they need to get over it. And, um, and so, but he put Mariana and Jimmy at the bottom. I said to him, Jimmy, why did you do that? It's always Jimmy and Mariana. You should have been on top. And he said, no, Mariana, because that's the way it's got to be. And the way it's going to be. And it is. It's the way it is now. I'm on top and he's just, actually his memory is holding me. And um, so it was a lot of first funny little memories that came through me. But I remember the first time I understood tithing. And I realized it, it was the first slice of bread on my bread. And I've, I have spoken on this before, but I think it's something that we really need to get to the place where we understand and we understand it permanently. And so I, um, I you see, because when I give Jesus my life, first of all, you know, somebody was saying to me, why can't I get over a bad, you know, getting back into the, going back into the world? 
Why? Because you didn't put Jesus first. Put him first, his way of doing and being right. That's what righteousness is. It's actually quite easy. If we get that concept in our head properly, it well, what and and there was a long time when we went through the spirit where period where everybody wore the bands. What would Jesus do? And I think it's maybe we need to get back the simplicities of. Well, okay, I mean this situation. What would Jesus do? I think a lot of the things that we do wouldn't we wouldn't do, uh, because it's just the way it is. And um, you want to live right? Well, you uh, you know we've got to put him first. And um, and so I uh, I want to say to you, the Bible says that when you put him first, the lo- he says it's that first scripture that I read to you, and this dear darling thing has disappeared on me. Um, the first scripture in Romans it says, for if the first fruit is holy. The, um, the lump also is holy. So in other words, what does that say? When I give my first, when I get my, first, my salary, the first thing I do is pay time because it's then I know that God can bless the rest. When I get anything, the first thing I do is give. But it's also not... You know, your tithe is non-negotiable. But I believe that giving to just generally living a valued life of giving is the way we have to stick at it. To the poor, giving to God, just living freely. I'm free to give. I'm free to live. I'm free from fear, and I'm free to be, enjoy the joy of the Lord. So this morning, enjoy giving freely, and God bless you. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Mariana, for that blessing. I want to quickly ask a question, uh, Michael. Mm-hmm. When did you join Word of Faith? <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> I heard a word conception in the uh, background there. I don't know. It's been many years. Technically, you could say from 1978. Was it 1978? Uh, the Cromptons came to Port Elizabeth. Uh, um, Pastor Richard uh, might uh, mention it now. Lundy, when did you join Word of Faith? Uh, five years ago. Five years ago. Five years ago. In Y2 Jam. Y2, yes. And you came with your friends that invited you. Yes, I did. Mm. Well, the reason I'm asking these guys when they joined Word of Faith, I joined Word of Faith, by the way. Also, I think, also at Conception, Mark, so we're in good, you're, you're going along a good path there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, starting point is next week, Sunday. So if you've just joined Word of Faith, it's a great place to start, is a starting point. And it's where we, we talk about um, where Word of Faith started, the vision of the church, but also we love to answer questions at starting point, like where, um, where you need to go next or, you know, um, where can you get involved? Or if you're not yet part of a connect group and you want to know which connect group to join, it's also a great place to start and answer that question. So next week, Sunday, between the 8 a.m. service and the 10 a.m. service, so it'll be after the 8 a.m. service, we run starting point in the chapel. So if you would like to join us, please go ahead and WhatsApp us, 67 3 Five six two three. Let us know. Uh, send us your name, your details, uh, your cell phone, of your cell phone number as well, and who's connect group. If you are in a connect group, come and join us for starting point next week. And as I said, it's a great, great place to start. And again, just a reminder: we're going to be doing communion straight after the service, so after Pastor Richard's uh, ministry. We're going to be doing communion together, so get your stuff ready. If you're watching online, you're in the church, you will be handed a little cup like this that's got the communion bread and juice on the inside of it. But um, we're looking forward to doing that together. Pastor Richard. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Um, I want to ask you for um, 
I want to ask you before we start with anything else, um, at seven o'clock tonight, we've got, um, we've got some senior leaders in our country, some big churches working together with us. And I ask you this afternoon to pray for people, pray that, um, pray, pray that, that, that there be a powerful word that goes over our country to, today. Um, I, I, I want you to be, um, I, I want us to be, to have a breakthrough in our country. I want us, um, I, I want us to, to see something really powerful happen. And I ask you to let all your friends know, every Christian friend, pray for tonight. It's going to, it's going to be quite remarkable. I'm trusting the Lord for breakthrough. Um, and, and so don't miss tonight, whatever you do. Um, to, today I'm speaking about walking on the raging sea. And um, effectively what it is, is, um, is, is I'm going to be speaking to you quite a bit about faith. Now, let's be honest the world has been upside down for more than 18 months now. Um, and if you look at the news cycle and what's going on around the world, it's actually quite frightening. Um, they're, they're crazy. There's craziness going on everywhere. Um, for once, South Africa is, 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 is you, you know, normally we're more crazy than just about anywhere else. Right now, we're like right in the center of craziness. There's, there are crazier parts than us. Praise the Lord. Actually, I don't know if I should praise the Lord. But the bottom line is, is that it's crazy everywhere. And at this time, I'm, so I'm going to be speaking to you about faith and how, where to get faith, what faith looks like. So let's, let's, get, um, let's get going. Um, and I'm going to, and um, in Hebrews 11:6 it says, "Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For we have to believe that He is, and that He is a reward of of those who um, reward of those who seek Him." Now, I believe that all of you are here because you because you trust God, because you want to please God. It's, for once, it's a little warmer than usual um, on a Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. And as I see, I see a lot more of you than in weeks gone by um, because I think it was easier to get up. But the bottom line is you still, and I see people nodding their head vigorously. <laughs> but I, but the, the bottom line is, is that... Um, we, 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 we are here on a Sunday morning because we love God, because we want to please Him. And so, how do you go about that? Well, if you read that, it's about faith. So, how do you grow your faith? How do you go about it? Well, the famous scripture that we all know, and, and one that I believe in implicitly, is, um, is Romans um, 10.17 says, so faith comes by hearing, that is hearing about the good news about Christ. So one of the best things that you can do is hear messages, preaching, you can speak to yourself, I've talked to you a lot about preaching to yourself, building up your own faith, confessing to yourself so that your faith can grow. But a lot of the time, um, but, but a lot of the time, we, we don't really, you know, is there another way? And so I want to read to you a scripture, 1 Peter 1 verse 5 to 7, that says, <coughs> so be, pardon me, so be truly glad There's, there is wonderful joy ahead, even though the going is rough for a while. Wow, that sounds like a word for right now, down here. These trials are only to test your faith to see whether or not it's strong and pure. It is being tested as fire tests gold and purifies it. And your faith is far more precious to God than mere gold. So if your faith remains strong after being tried in the test tube of fiery trials, 
It will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day of his return. So if we look at that, what does that tell us? It tells us that the other way that we, that we grow faith is how? We grow faith through tests and trials. So tests are not just to see whether you have faith, because that would just be cruel. Tests and trials are there to grow your faith. So Jesus preached a lot about um, Jesus preached a lot about um, growing your faith. Um, um, sorry, he didn't preach much about faith or growing your faith. But what he did was that he um, he actually he, he he actually what he did was he put his disciples' faith to the test. So we're going to go to Matthew, um, I think it's Matthew 8, um, and I want to read you how he went about it. So he didn't preach much about faith, but if he, he constantly rebuked his disciples, oh, you of little faith. So what did he do about it? It would be totally wrong. It would to be totally unfair, totally wrong, totally... Un just bad if, if Jesus said, you need faith, and he didn't do anything about it. And so there are two very important events that occurred um, when, when Jesus, um, when, when Jesus, sorry, my, my, my scriptures have disappeared here. Um, so when, when Jesus um, let me hand this over. Thank you. Okay. There we go. So my, my scriptures are gone. So let's get them back. So let's, let's have a look at 1 Peter 1 verse 6 to 7. Sorry. No. Genesis. There we go. Matthew 8 verse 23 to 26. Then he got into a boat and started across the lake with his disciples. Suddenly a terrible storm came up with waves higher than the, than the boat. But P Jesus was asleep. The disciples went to him and, wake, and wakening him shouted, Lord, save us, we are sinking. But Jesus answered, Oh, you men of little faith, why are you so frightened? Then he stood up and rebuked the wind and waves and the storm subsided and all was calm. Now, this was a test of faith. Now, we heard Pastor Peter DeFin speak about it so beautifully last Sunday night at the 7 o'clock service. But this was, they were, Jesus put them in a difficult situation. They thought they were going to die. This was, a, this was a demonically inspired storm. And Jesus was there, and he was, but he was asleep, and they got panicky, and they shouted, and they cried out to him, and they woke him up, and he rebuked them. What is his rebuke? Oh, you of little faith. Now, this was literally a test so that you could get fitter, that you could get stronger, so that your faith can be better. So, f so f tests of faith, we think of like writing a test, you know, getting a mark at the end. But a test of faith is actually more like a trial, working through things, you know, so that you can go get fitter. Every time you go to the gym or every time you go out running or every time you go out walking, that is what a test of your fitness is. It's a, and at the end you end up with what? More fitness. That's if you test it properly. So in the same way, this was a test of their faith. At the end, they were meant to have what? More faith. Now, why, why did, was this test of faith on water? Water, and I, I, we're going to go to um, we're going to go to Genesis one verse one and two. It says. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the surface of the waters. So, 
in the beginning, before there was any creation whatsoever, what did we have? We had waters that were formless and empty, and that probably the better translation is what? It's wild and waste. So the raging sea, the raging waters, is the state of uncreation. Do you see that? What does uncreation look like? Raging waters. Before the intervention of God, there are raging waters. So the test of faith that, that, that Jesus put his disciples was, was to put them smack bang in the middle of the raging waters, the wild and waste, the wild and the, 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 the wild and waste of formless and empty, these raging waters. So, that's why that, the test of faith that Jesus gave them was to put them in a similar situation. So then in, so then in chapter 14, Matthew, Matthew 14, that Jesus then feeds the 5,000. And then in Matthew 14, verse 22, it says, As soon as the meal was finished, he insisted that the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while, they were dis while he dismissed the people. With the crowd dispersed, he climbed the mountain so that he could be by himself and pray. He stayed there, alone late into the night. Now, these were fishermen. Why did Jesus have to insist that they get in the, that they get in the boat and go across the lake? They'd done it all the time. Why, were, why did he have to basically force them, compel them? It's because they'd seen this movie before. Not that long ago, they had seen this very movie. And sure, across, sure enough, they start crossing the lake, and what happens? What happens? It happens again to them. They could, they'd been their faith had been tested. They thought they were going to die. They were out on the lake. Jesus says, go across the lake again, and they knew what was going to happen. A big, giant storm would come again. They were like, no, no. Jesus said, go, no, no. Go, okay, we'll go. And they, there they are. They stranded out in the middle of the lake once again with a, a mighty storm, and they're scared that they're going to sink once again. But last time, Jesus was in the boat. At least he was in the boat, even if he was asleep. Now they're all by themselves. They're there all by themselves, out in the middle of the lake. Will they get to the other side? So, in Matthew 14, 24, it says, so it says, Meanwhile, the, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy seas. So they're out there fighting this water. This, now, remember, what did water represent? Uncreation, the opposite of creation. Wild and waste waters, raging seas, was before the intervention of, of God. So they, they're in the situa this situation which represents almost like an absence of God once again. But this time, as far as they could see, God wasn't there. And then in verse 25 to 26 it says, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit that cried out for fear. Now, where have you seen this situation before? Where have we seen this situation before? Genesis, when? Let's go back to Genesis 1, verse 1 to 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 
The earth was formless and empty, wild and waste, and the darkness covered the deep waters. So there's deep waters that are wild and waste, remember, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Here is Jesus walking on the waters. This is a replay of Genesis 1, verse 1 to 2. It had to happen. Why? Because two reasons, and I'll show you. The first is, what is their response to Jesus? It's, then the disciples worshipped him. This is once they got to land. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. So literally, literally what? They saw that Jesus was God because he did what Jehovah had done in Genesis 1, 1 and 2. So we've seen, we've read about this. Jehovah over the water. Here he is again. Jehovah over the water. So it was, it was a proof that he was God. And their response is, this is God. Only Jehovah did this. Jehovah has done it again. This is God. He is fulfilling what Jehovah did over the wild and waste waters. And the second reason was, of course, to push and test their faith. But here's the amazing thing. So who walked on the water there? Jehovah walked on the water. But this is, to me, the amazing part of it. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I'm here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, it's, if it's really you, come tell me. Come to you, walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. Who hovers over the water? Jehovah. And now Peter. Am I saying that Peter is God? No, not at all. He went on to betray Jesus. He went on, then he became a great disciple. In fact, uh, two chapters later, Jesus says to him, get behind me, Satan. So I'm not saying that Peter is God. What I'm saying is, if you walk in faith and focus on Jesus, you will start to do amazing things. Things that only people think only God can do that. But it's you. Now, of course, unfortunately, and so what am I trying to teach you? For though for through faith we walk not by sight. And what happens is, is um, what happened is, is that, that Peter, what did he do? He took his eyes off Jesus and he sunk because he started to look at everything else. When you walk by faith, when you focus on Jesus, you will do things that people thought only God could do. Say, so, but what are you saying? Can you say that even? Well, let's look at what Jesus said. He said in Matthew 14, verse 12 to 14, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I've done and even greater because I'm going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the, the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. So what does it say? You will do even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. So if we focus on the, Jesus and uh, sitting next to the right hand of the Father, we are supposed to do as great things as him and even better. This is what Jesus said. This is what Jesus said. 
We mustn't be more, must we, we mustn't be more religious than Jesus. We mustn't be more super spiritual than Jesus. So what did Jesus do? He built an incredible organization to win the area for Jesus. He built a church that transformed the world. He, he healed the sick. He raised the dead. He had words of knowledge about the woman at the well. Again and again, he did amazing things. He even walked on water, but then so did Peter. Why? Because God doesn't want you to, to keep you down there. God wants to be in partnership with you, and I'll show you. In 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 12, it says, we pleaded with you, encouraged you, and urged you to live your lives in a way that God would consider worthy. For he called you to share in his kingdom and glory. So your calling is to share with his glory. So when Peter jumped out of the boat and started walking on the water, that was Jesus wanted that. Because he wanted to share his glory with his children. So there's no one like Jehovah. There's no, great, there's, there's no God that can rival him. There's no spirit that can rival him. He is, he is the only one to be worshipped and praised. But he wants to share his glory with you. He doesn't want you to just get by, just hold on to your faith enough to get into heaven. He wants to bless you and use you to touch and change the world. He wants you to do what he did and, and more, greater. He wants you, at times you'll say, in fact, what happened to Paul? In, he gets bitten by the snake Nothing happens to him, and they think he is a god. Twice it happened to Paul that they thought he was a god. He had to correct them. He's not a god. But because of the glory that God shared with him, it's easy to mistake. Like, how does he do that? It's because he keeps his eye, kept his eyes on Jesus. When you keep your eyes on Jesus, you start to do supernatural, miraculous things. That's God's plan for you. It's not there to stand on you. That's not his plan. His plan is for you to his plan is to stand on the devil. That's what his plan is. Not on you. He wants to lift you up. He wants to do amazing things through you. That's God's plan for you. So In James 1, verse 5 to 8, if you, it says, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. This is very important. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. So when we take our focus off Jesus, when we put it, start looking at the COVID situation, the crackdown in Australia, the murders in New Zealand, the looting in Durban and Joburg, the continual craziness in America, the crazy weather, we become unstable. We st get thrown around. And when, we, when you're stuck on water, what is that? That is like uncreation. It's like what? It's getting tossed around. We, on this, this, this chaotic sea, this raging sea, so such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they're unstable in everything they do. If your focus is taken off Jesus in any way, 
then some of your alliances with the world. And so I'm here to teach you, to tell you today that God wants to do very, very big things through you. He wants to do stuff that looks like how did they do it. God wants to share his glory with you. He wants to put his glory on you. He wants to do big things for you. Does it mean that he's not God? Not at all. He is here to be in partnership with you. He wants to use you. He wants to use you to change, to touch your street. He wants you to use you to, to pray for people and they be healed, and the sick be healed. He wants to use you that COVID cases be healed. He wants to use you that lame people get healed. He wants to use, use you so that blind people see. He wants to use you that people who are held captive by demon spirits are set free. This is, you are not just sitting in a bench here and sort of getting to heaven. That's not God's plan for you. If Peter was, if God was willing to put Peter on the water, how much more does he want, not want to do for you? He wants to do big things through you. That's his plan. This wasn't, this wasn't an accident. This wasn't a maybe. This is a when you're going through a test of faith, Put your eyes on Jesus. Don't get washed around and expect big to do big things. Some people even say, well, how did they do that? They did it. They did the miraculous. Why? Because they kept their eyes on Jesus. And so we've seen so many people in their finances be so blessed here at Word of Faith. We've seen healings. We've seen miracles. We've seen people come to salvation. Why? Because we keep our eyes on Jesus, or we certainly try. And when we do that, we will, you will do big things. That's God's plan for you. Not little things, big things. So I'm here to encourage you in your test of faith. If you're going through a difficult time, a test of faith, that's fine. You're going to come out with more faith at the end of it. It's not to check. It's not a check to see, have you got more faith? It's a, it's a time to ensure that your faith is purified, that it's going to be stronger and better. Why? So that when you're out on those chaotic waters, you don't have to worry about a boat. You can do stuff that it looks like God, and that's okay. Why? Because God is in partnership with you. He wants to use you to do big things. Amen. I want you to um, close your eyes and bow your heads. If you didn't know that God wants to partner with you, you, f you feel, you understand that you're not in partnership with God. You haven't come into partnership with God. He wants to do amazing big things in your life. I want you to, I want to pray for you. So if you're online, I want you to type, I'm going into partnership with God. It's a long sentence, but type it. If, if you want to be included in the prayer, I'm going into partnership with God. And if you hear and you feel like you're not in partnership with God, please raise your hand now and say, include me in the prayer. I want to be in partnership with God. Type that. Or if you're in, in, in here, in the congregation right now, and you want to be included in that prayer, please raise your hand high and say, include me. Quickly. Okay. I'm going to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, 
I pray, Father God, that you will help us to understand that you're not here to push us down. That as we keep our eyes on you and humble ourselves before you, you're going to lift us up to a very high position. Thank you, Lord, that you love us so much. We bless you. We praise you for wanting to bring us into partnership. Help us to step out in faith. Help us to start to do the supernatural things that we thought only you could do. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to hand over to Pastor Matthew for communion. All right. Praise the Lord. What an incredible message. And um, I just want to follow that with what Pastor Richards has spoken about. As we're about to take communion, I want to encourage you that as we take communion, this represents and this, is, this comes from when Jesus broke the bread and shared the cup with his disciples um, the night before he was crucified and, and the week leading up to that. And, you know, the thing is, this is as we take this, I want you to know this is not just some religious rit ritual we're doing this morning. There is power, I believe there is power in communion. This is part of our covenant with Jesus Christ. This is part of our covenant that, that when his body was broken, that represents the body of Christ we are part of. It represents the body that was broken for our healing, for, for our life, for our resurrection, and, and the blood that was shed for our forgiveness and the life of Jesus that flows through us. The very life that Jesus promised and lived can be, can, that power can flow through you this morning. So I want you to know this morning, as you take this communion, here in the church, we've got these little cups with bread. I'd like um, the church members in the, yeah, you, that are yeah, you can get yours ready so long. If you're at home, get some bread, get some cups quickly to share with your family. But I want to encourage you that as you take this communion, I want you to know this morning that the power of Christ is flowing through your home. It's flowing through your body. body. That where there's salvation needed, there's power in the body, in the life of Christ for you this morning. If there is forgiveness needed, there's power through the blood of Jesus that's flowing through this morning. I want you to know this morning as you take of the, the bread and the, that there's healing. If you need in healing, I can think of so many people this morning that we just need. And please, in fact, I'm going to ask right now that as we're taking communion, just start to claim your healing this morning. Start to message the names of people that need healing this morning. And let's claim and declare the healing power of God this morning. So we're going to pray right now as you take of the bread. I'm going to read one scripture to you and I want to encourage you with this. In 1 Corinthians 12 verse 20 to 19 that says, As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are necessary, are indispensable. I want you to know this morning that as you're taking communion, God's heart, God's mind, God's focus, God's love is on you this morning. You are not weak. You are not unnecessary. You are part of the body of Christ and you are a necessary part of this body that is going forward, marching through this nation, marching through this city, marching through through this globe to change people's lives with the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And just take of the bread right now, just hold it in your hand and just pray with me. Pray this prayer. Father God, thank you for your body that was broken this morning. Lord, I repent. Search my heart, Holy Spirit and remove every wrong thought, every evil thought, motive, emotion in my heart that is not of you this morning. I hand it to you. And as I take of this bread, Lord, I thank you that I am part 100% connected, part of, joined with your body, your power, 
this morning. I'm one with you. In Jesus' name, you may take of the bread. And as you take the cup, that's it, in Jesus' name. Father, this morning, I want to thank you that as each person just took of the bread right now, that, Lord, every person would become part of your, part of the, not only part of this body, but, Lord, I, prep, I pray and I declare that every part of this body will start to function 100% in Jesus' mighty name. Where there are people that, that need to move in, into wherever you've called them and the purpose, the calling, that Lord, I declare that those parts of the body will move. Now you can take the cup and pray this after me this morning. Father God, as I take of this cup, I thank you that you have forgiven me of every sin from the past, the present, even the sin of the future has no power over me, over my body, over my destiny, over my family. I am forgiven, set free this morning. I receive the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus this morning as I take this cup by His stripes I am healed I'm set free delivered delivered every bondage broken every curse is broken every negative destructive word removed in Jesus' name. Amen. You can take of the cup. And Father, as they take that this morning, Lord, this morning, I thank you that as we share of this communion, I pray for a fresh deposit, a fresh deposit of your Holy Spirit, a fresh deposit of your resurrection healing power in each and every person that is in the service watching right now that would destroy and kill and remove every curse, every bondage, every negative destructive word and replace it Lord. Let your Holy Spirit and, and the power of your blood right now attract the anointing, increase, promotion, prosperity, healing, power of God this morning. Lord, I speak over Fiona's life and her family healing this morning. Today, Peter van Heerden, I cast and break that negative spirit of sickness and death right now. I rebuke it right now, Peter, over your life this morning. Remove it, remove it right now in the name of Jesus. Over everybody, over Sean Crea this morning, I declare over your body, rise up, rise up, rise up in the name of Jesus. I speak to everybody that is, uh, that is battling with en the lack of energy or sickness right now to rise up. I command your body to do what it was assigned to do according to the purpose and will of God. Right now, let the will of God be upon your body as it is in heaven. Be healed. Be healed today in Jesus' mighty name. Curse of COVID and fear. I reject and rebuke you now. Just, man, just tell it to go. Rebuke it now. If you are battling with fear or, 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 um, or if you're feeling symptoms even of, of COVID, of flu, cancer, whatever it may be, I declare and speak healing, the healing power of God by His stripes. You are healed this morning, set free. In Jesus' mighty name. Just receive that healing as we go into one more worship song before we close. Closing in prayer. All right. Well, we're glad that you joined us this morning. And um, please, I, I want to encourage you this week. When you get a chance, have communion every single day. I want to tell you now, we want to thank the Lord for the nurses, the doctors, the hospitals that have been helping during this time, that have been there for us. But I want to tell you now, never ever reject and never forget the blood of Jesus, the power of Christ that's on the inside of you. That is the power to heal, set free and save. And we declare that over you.
this morning. Thanks for joining. We're so glad you could be with us. We've got a 10 o'clock service as well if you'd like to come and join us in the house. And don't forget tonight, 7 p.m. is Jane Hammond. And next week, Sunday, is starting point between the 8 and 10 a.m. services. And we've also got prayer meeting on Tuesday morning, half past eight, man. We, the, and connect groups. There's so much going on. Mike and Lundy, thank you guys for joining me. It's been my pleasure. Yeah. Cool stuff. And you can join them on a Friday night if you if you teenagers. Hey, if you're not a teenager, I tell you, you guys will be blessed as well. We've got youth live on YouTube and our Instagram account every Friday night from quarter to seven. You can join us there too. God bless you guys. Have a great Sunday. <laughs>